Most people know that God calls individuals to a spiritual purpose, but can he have a calling upon a nation? Well, today we're going to look at what the Bible says about that subject and why it's important for us to know our nation's destiny. Yeah, you're going to be sharing a message about this, Dick, and then we're going to be coming back to the set and praying for our nation at this important time. Stay with us. This is Lifeline Today. Welcome to Lifeline Today, and you know what? It's good to have you with us in this very, very important season in our nation. Uh, but also we want to encourage you if you want to phone the prayer center. The prayer center gets very busy. And if uh, you want to call, call now because you know what? You'll be able to get an operator most of the time. And some of the times, of course, we have voicemail. But uh, thank you for tuning into the broadcast today. And as I said, we're in a very, very important time in our nation. And I want to share some things about a nation's destiny. You know, there's a, there's a whole segment of people within the body of Christ that actually don't believe this. They don't believe that a nation has a calling or a nation has a purpose or a destiny. And uh, of course, the emphasis there is that each of us individually have a responsibility to respond to the Lord, to receive him as Christ, as our Savior. And of course, that's very true. There's no question about that. However, today I want to just talk about why it is clear in scripture that nations can have a calling. Nations can have a purpose. And so I want to begin today with Matthew 25, 31. This is one of the more commonly quoted scriptures. Matthew 25, 31 and 32 and 33. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate one from the other as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Interesting. Look what it says. It says that he will have the nations gathered before him and then he will separate them as sheep and goats. Of course, there's some uh, metaphorical language here. The sheep and the goats refer to those who are righteous and the goats are those who are unrighteous. Uh, that is the imagery that not only is in the scripture, but you see that well, you know that in satanic rituals, they use the goat symbol as their symbol. So there is a reference to that, of course, uh, in the scripture here. But what we also see is that the Lord is judging nations in this passage in Matthew 25. And uh, it's interesting because Isaiah 9 describes the Messiah as the man who has the government upon his shoulder. So this is the Messiah, Jesus. He has the government on his shoulder. So it's only fitting that he will not only judge individuals, but he will judge nations and governments because the government will be upon his shoulder. And, you know, this scripture here in Matthew 25, actually, if you follow it in terms of its uh, chronology, following this, Christ will have a government on earth for a thousand years. We call that the millennial reign. Now, some churches don't, uh, you know, there's a pre, post, and uh, a millennial view of, of eschatology, but most churches adhere to, or most people believe that there is a thousand year reign of Christ yet to come upon the earth. So here's something else interesting. Paul the apostle more or less said something similar. In Acts 17 verse 26 he said, and this is interesting by the way, let me just say that he's speaking to a secular nation. This is in Athens at the Acropolis. And here he is, he's speaking to them after he's seen all of their idols and their temples and, and their rituals. And so he's addressing them from Mars Hill. By the way, I was, had the opportunity to stand on Mars Hill myself and uh, I pretended to do the sermon that Paul <laughs> preached, uh, just had to do it. I was just so th thrilled to be in that la exact location. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grow up for him and find him though he's not far from each one of us. Wow, this is even clearer. It says that a God intentionally pre-appoints the boundaries of the nations and has predetermined their times. So there is a sovereign timeline 
in the history of man. You know, uh, some people like to say it this way. It's not history, it's his story. And, and there he, you see it in this uh, statement by Paul that he has pre-appointed nations, and then he even says the purpose, that they may seek after him. So God has put this into every nation, and that's why he can judge every nation at the end of the age, that he can judge the nations and decide sheep or goats based on their response to the call of God upon them. And now remember, Paul is talking to a secular Gentile nation here. So this is not just... Uh, you know, uh, something for the Jewish nation, for example. So in Psalm 2, we read another interesting, uh, well, the entire chapter, very interesting, where it talks about all the nations of the earth and their relationship to Messiah. And it's actually quite a profound psalm when you think about it, that David wrote this so many years before Christ and addressed the nations of the earth. And it says there, it talks about how the nations of the earth choose to rebel against the government of Messiah. And yet, this is the advice that this psalm gives. This is Psalm 2, verse 10. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are those who put their trust in him. Have you, did you read this? It said in verse 12, kiss the son. Well, actually, the words mean embrace his instruction or embrace his guidance or receive his direction. This is the word there, kiss the son. Now, it's not only amazing that these words are mentioned to the nations, but it's also amazing that the son specifically is mentioned here in Old Testament scripture. This is a phenomenal statement really and a prophetic scripture, but it does give us something very clear that the nations are called accountable uh, into accountability before the Lord. Every nation will answer. Now this is amazing. That's amazing. Now I, I want to share something because uh, the nation of, of America has very clearly uh, a Christian heritage, Christian root, and it's something that they hold dearly, is that their nation has a purpose. Well, one of their founders, John Quincy Adams, said this. He said, our constitution was made only for moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. In the founding of that nation, they understood that the core purpose of that nation was their faith in Jesus Christ, their acceptance of the Bible as authoritative over their nation. And then he says, if it's not that kind of people, then our constitution is not actually a good constitution. It's only for those who have a love for God. I think that's amazing that that nation from its founding understood their spiritual heritage. But did you know Canada has that same spiritual heritage? Canada has the same spiritual calling. Our fathers of confederation, and one of them, Sir Samuel Leonard Tilley, who was actually the, uh, the governor of the, uh, it wasn't a province at the time, the governor of the colony of New Brunswick. And he was one of the ones who met in Charlottetown with other fathers of the nation to form this nation. They formed the constitution. And uh, by the way, it wasn't 10 provinces and three territories at that time. It was just those maritime provinces in Ontario and Quebec. And they put forth an idea and he in particular put forth Psalm 72 verse 1, which says that he shall have dominion from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. Of course, this is Solomon writing this psalm. By the way, Solomon wrote two psalms, only two, and uh, the first one being Psalm 72. And it, it's interesting that two scriptures from Psalm 72 have found their way on our peace tower in Ottawa. Uh, inscribed on the peace tower above the doors, on the archway. And Psalm 72, 1, Psalm 72, verse 8, and of course, Proverbs 29, 18, which says, without a vision, the people perish. And so, you know, this is a really an amazing statement here that uh, Samuel Leonard Tilley proposed to his uh, fellow constitution founders and said, we need to come up with a name for this nation. And he proposed the dominion of Canada based on this verse. And it does tell you that their vision for Canada as they formed it was clearly a spiritual vision. 
a vision that acknowledged the supremacy of God. In fact, our Constitution acknowledges the supremacy of God. And there are those who like to cancel, uh, challenge that today. But the fact is that our Constitution declares we recognize His supremacy over our nation. And then, interestingly, that Psalm 72 verse 1 says that He should have dominion from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. Of course, that's a common expression for the North Pole. But it's also interesting because it says to the ends of the earth that Canada's calling is to be a blessing to the nations of the earth. You know, we've been in meetings this year, some of the most phenomenal meetings and in our programs. We'll be sharing a little bit about this in the, the following weeks. But, but, you know, I want you to know we've been in some of these where individuals from other nations have come and made presentations in the conference and said, we need you, Canada. We need you. It's phenomenal. You know, Solomon said this in Psalm 127 and verse 1. This is the only other psalm written by Solomon, by the way. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. You know, this is a powerful statement. It says, we can do whatever we can do, but unless the Lord builds the house. And so our first course of action in days like these is prayer. I read this quote the other day. It's by S.D. Gordon. He said, prayer strikes the winning blow. Service is simply picking up the pieces. We have to do both. We need to pray to strike the winning blow. But we also need to be engaged. We need to vote. You know, I read this somewhere the other day. A, a believer's vote is their right to intercession, to pray for the nation. If we don't vote, we're abdicating our responsibility. And then we need to vote according to very important principles. You know, many times what is played forth in the election or in a media uh, situation are issues that are not really prime issues. They may be popular in terms of media, but they're not necessarily the core issues, and we need to know them. You know, there's issues that pertain to the family and morality. There's issues that plan even to economics and finances, godly use of finances and resources. And so let me encourage you today that we need a godly perspective as we move into times like this, not only just in election times, but particularly at a time of election, we need a proper perspective. And I want to ask you to really take some prayerful thought about just some of these issues, issues that do relate to the family and the authority of the family. Parental rights, for example, are under assault, which is, ought to be a great concern. Uh, issues pertaining to partisan politics in our federal institutions. I'm talking about universities, colleges, and even in federal agencies that are blatantly partisan in their politics, blatantly on the left or whichever. And this is something that we are, by constitution, assured that should never happen. Uh, issues relating to the freedom of speech, freedom of association, and freedom of religion. You know that there are now, voices that are trying to say that parts of the Bible are unlawful or hate speech, where this has been stuff that has been protected. The freedom of speech applies to everybody. It's a two-edged sword, you know. It applies to those who are for and against. And that's what some, something we need to keep in mind. Issues affecting Canada's sovereignty and security and rule of law. You know, when we see... Uh, individuals being able to rush the border and then are welcomed and paid without going through due process, it's, a, it's really an affront to those who do go through the due process, but it also is a circumvention of our law. And this is something we need to respect, the rule of law in our nation. Uh, issues re regarding the prosperity of every region of our nation. And unfortunately, there have been times in our history where our Government has paid attention to certain regions in preference to others. And uh, we need a government that will say, no, all regions are important and we treat them equally. You know, the, the, essentially the whole principle of equal rights is simple. It's equal rights, <laughs> not elevated rights. And we're living in a culture where we think to make amends, we need to elevate the rights of various groups. They should get special privileges or special treatment in some way. 
Is it good to make amends with individuals? Absolutely, or groups, yes. But we still need to hold on to equal rights. Everyone has the same status in the eyes of our laws and in the eyes of our nation. And so today I want to encourage you to take very seriously what we do as, in terms of our votes, the party that we support, the principles that we're supporting, and don't necessarily take what the media say. It's good to do a little research. And then something else I want to ask you, be involved. Take the time to really get involved. Support candidates in your area. Find out their position on certain issues. Find out where they stand, if it means just even having a personal conversation. And learn more about them so that you can vote responsibly, but also with some knowledge and understanding. And here's the other thing. Peter, or the great apostle, said this, pray for the king. He was saying for government for all those in leadership and government. He said that we might live righteous and godly lives. You see, regardless of who comes into government, we're called to pray for them. We're called to pray for righteous government. And so I encourage you to pray for our government. We here in our ministry pray regularly. Actually, we pray a lot for our government, for our nation, for our destiny. And I want to encourage you to do the same today. So God bless you as you do that. I encourage you to do that prayerfully and carefully in this hour. Canada needs a fresh move of God, and you can help by partnering financially with Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan and the breakthrough anointing that's on this ministry. All monthly donors join our unique group of faithful partners, and in appreciation, Dick and Joan will send you a special DVD. In it, Dick and Joan share their hearts and vision for Canada and take time to pray powerfully over you. In addition, we will send you this year's special partner fridge magnet, a reminder that you stand together with Dick and Joan for Canada. Partner at $50 a month and also receive this leather-bound journal entitled Sacred Time, Sacred Place. This journal will bring greater intimacy to your daily time with the Lord. Faith-filled partners giving $100 a month will also receive this elegant journal Bible personally signed with a note of encouragement from Joan. Your tax-deductible donation will empower this ministry to release the prophetic voice of God across our nation. Call today and say yes to becoming a partner with Dick and Joan. Phone 403-942-0123 or email info at dickandjoan.com today. So many viewers are saying they're encouraged by the program Lifeline Today. One caller said she'd totally lost her passion for Canada and was expecting only judgment. And she wanted us to pray that her love for the nation will be restored. So we want to challenge you today. Do you believe that Canada will be saved? You know, it says in Joshua 4, 24, that God did miracles for Israel so that all nations of the earth would know the Lord's hand is powerful. All nations. God is about to do miracles in our nation, in Canada. God is about to do miracles for you, for your loved ones. What miracle do you need today? Will you give us a call here in the prayer center? We've got many powerful intercessors standing by. We're waiting to pray for you. Give us a call right now. Well, let me just remind you that Jill is correct. We can pray for a nation, but we're also here to pray for you. Your need is important as well. There's not one or the other. We certainly do. That's but today we're really focusing on our nation, Joan. Mm -hmm. We are in an election. We really are at a critical turning point in our nation. Mm -hmm. I believe the outcome of our the election is critical to our future. In fact, I, I'm concerned about if things continue the way they are for four years, another four years, if we go the same way, our nation may be turned irreparably. I believe that's a potentially there, irreparably away from its, its well, uh, and, and destiny. And that, that's not just you saying that, Dick. No. We're hearing that all over Canada. And there's a reason. There's yes. a reason. These things that I mentioned earlier uh, that have well underway in our, our nation already. Uh, issues tr uh, pertaining to the traditional family unit and morality mm -hmm. are being legislated and certain it, it could go that the certain parts of the Bible are now considered hate speech because of this. And again, uh, this goes against freedom of speech and freedom of religion that uh, for hundreds of years we've had the right to have the freedom of religion, our religious conviction, uh, but increasing influence of partisan politics. You know, even paying media 
to uh, just before an election <laughs> is a violation of previous understanding in our government and in our nation that that is partisan and you don't and the media are supposed to be nonpartisan. That's right. So that every political party has a freedom of a voice and are on a level platform. But we've actually seen this violated and I don't see the outrage. No. This should create outrage. Yes, it should. But issues of freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of religion. Some of this is coming under assault. And, uh, and then uh, uh, there's, well, I, I, I know we could always come up with lots of individual examples where mm -hmm. people's freedom of speech was violated. But, but still, it's something that we need to really um, hold on to because the freedom of speech principle means that you have the freedom to say, have people to say things that you don't like mm -hmm. or you disagree with, mm -hmm. but they have the right to say it. From varying perspectives, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Of course, our sovereignty as a nation uh, can't be, you know. You know. Anyway, yeah. these are just some of the issues. I mean, are really, our economic policies are a great issue that's come up in our election. Mm -hmm. But you know, remember we had Charlie Robinson here, and he's a great prophet. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, he told his story in much more length. And, uh, and he talked about it in a vision that he had, and I believe it was uh, a couple decades ago, that he had this vision of the throne room of God and all the nations coming in, one nation after another. And as the nations came in, there was all this trumpeting and announcing and rejoicing and cheering. But then he saw this moment where someone, uh, probably an angel, uh, shouted with a trumpet, the nation of Canada. Wow. And he said he saw the whole throne room of God go into an uproar. Yeah. You know, like a sports event. In right? a good way. In a good way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. In a, they just, I mean, there was cheers and rejoicing and joy as Canada, the delegation of Canada, it was almost like an Olympic event. Yes, right. Comes into the throne room of God. And it says that this, there was such huge celebration because of what God had done in Canada. Uh -huh. And he said he heard a percentage of people who had... Uh, come to the Lord in their nation. Mm -hmm. And he said, the Lord spoke to him not to share the percentage that he heard in his spirit. He never has. I think that's wise, actually, because, you know, you don't want to dis, uh, distract the whole issue, is yeah. that God has a purpose for Canada. That's right. And you know, Dick, when you were sharing before, you sh talked about sheep nations and goat nations. Yeah. And I believe that one of the reasons why there was such a, a glorious uproar in Canada or in, in the throne room, the throne room about God, yeah. Canada in this vision is that Canada was coming into the throne room as a sheep nation. And you know, that's my prayer. Many times when I pray, I say, God, don't let Canada be a goat nation. Yeah. Let Canada be a sheep nation. Mm -hmm. Let her fulfill her destiny. I pray that all the time because right now, the way we're going, we could go into being a goat nation. And Dick, you mentioned it. We travel all over the world, and especially in the this last past little year, while this past year, we've been to different places, at, well, in Canada, but we went to Hong Kong in the summer, met with Chinese uh, from mainland China, from Hong Kong, from, you know, other areas, and all, and it's European amazing what people. they're saying is, Canada, we need you. Why is that? It's because Canada's destiny is to be a, de a, a country that comes alongside and serves and is blessed to be a blessing to the nations of the earth. And they're saying, Canada, where are you? We need you. And yeah. so Canada needs to step into her full well, destiny. You know, uh, the Americas, for example, America definitely is a ruling nation. They've yeah. been a peacekeeping nation uh, by enforcing the peace. Yeah. I mean, you know, they are. They're a ruling nation, and that's uh -huh. a difficult role. But Canada is different. We're a, we're a serving nation. Yeah. We're this nation that comes along to provide healing and service. And yeah, that's right. uh, we've done a lot of, uh, you know, the, the, the food programs and yeah. the peacekeeping programs yeah. historically, I'm saying, as a nation. And it's because it's our DNA. And that is one of the things the world needs. We're not even that big of a nation. In no. fact, you know, there's <laughs> cities in 
the East, you know, that are bigger than the population of Canada, I literally, know. cities literally. in yeah. India and, and other places and in the world. And yet Canada is important to God, and yeah. she has a specific destiny. Uh, you talk about the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Revelation Canada 22, two. is to go alongside nations yeah. and to bring a healing touch. Dick, none of this will happen without prayer. And I just felt to write down a few things because a lot of people might be asking right now, well, how do you pray for the nation of Canada? And so I've got some scriptures and maybe just... We you have know, a, a few minutes, thoughts. So. Uh, pray for righteous government. Uh, for Proverbs, Proverbs 14 and verse 34 says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to the people. Then pray for those who are in leadership. First and foremost, in 1 Timothy 2 and verse 13, or 1 to 3, it says, Pray for kings and everyone who's in authority. I always pray Matthew 6, verse 10, part of the Lord's Prayer. Pray for God's kingdom to come and His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray for God-fearing leaders to be elected. Ask God to put them in to the places that they need to be. Ask for mercy for our nation. And this is one that I think is really important. Pray for a fresh move of God in our nation, which when it comes, it removes strongholds of thinking which are contrary to God's purposes. And I think that's really important, Dick. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 5 says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. When God moves and His Spirit invades the nation, it pulls down strongholds or systems of thinking and belief. And that's what needs to happen. Yeah. So people are softened to the gospel and they yeah. begin to think differently. That's what we need to pray for Canada. I, I want to emphasize that a government doesn't bring us to our spiritual destiny. No. Prayer and obedience by the body of Christ does. But then the government needs to align to that spiritual destiny. And that's the issue at hand. That's and right. certainly that's an issue at hand for this election. Again, we want to ask you to vote. Vote intelligently. Vote according to those principles that I just shared about those yeah. things that are, are under uh, real... Uh, well, there's a lot of debate going on about Find them. And, and there's a lot of concern about losing some of the historic rights and freedoms of this Find nation. Find out what your candidates believe. Absolutely. <laughs> and, of course, uh, the value of life, uh, like the unborn, these are all Huge. important issues. Oh, extremely important issues. Mm. And so I want to encourage you to do that. And be in prayer. Oh, my goodness, be in prayer. But don't abdicate. You know that many Christians don't vote, mm -hmm. which is absolutely a shock to me. So I want to encourage you to do that today. <laughs> All right. God bless you. Remember this. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for partnering with us. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments about the program. To watch past episodes, learn about the ministry, or contact us, visit our website at dickandjoan.com. You can also find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. To find out how you can have Dick and Joan at your church, event, or conference, call Lifeline today at 587-425-5730 or email info at dickandjoan.com.